Hello and welcome to Working With Miniatures. I'm Jim and today we're going to be building a snowy tower terrain that also acts as a custom brush holder. We'll be primarily using XPS foam and AK Interactive snow terrain. Let's get started. Using my Proxon hot wire cutter, I cut narrow strips of scrap foam left over from other projects. These will serve as the bricks for the tower. You do not need a hot wire cutter for this step and can achieve the same results with a steady hand and a utility knife, but you'll need to change blades often and be doubly careful not to cut yourself. Our home was built in the 60s and I've had to fix a lot of things over the years, including plumbing. Because of this, I have leftover PVC pipe. I decided earlier that I wanted the tower to be 3.5 inches tall, so I clamped the pipe to a table and marked my length, and then carefully cut it with a hacksaw. This was simple enough, though normally I would use a bandsaw to make this cut in a matter of seconds, but for these projects I've been trying to use more accessible and affordable tools that most people would be able to easily get a hold of. With a utility knife, I cut away the rough strands, though careful not to fling plastic cast off into my eyes, which I've done before. I then used a sander with 100 grit sandpaper to smooth the cut end. If you do not have a sander, you can use a sanding block or just lay a length of sandpaper on the table, hold it in place, and then drag the PVC pipe over it. Back at the Proxon hot wire cutter, I use a stencil to mark a disc that will fit snugly inside of the 2 inch PVC pipe and then I cut it out of scrap half inch XPS foam. I then reposition the fence and cut the discs into thirds. I cut a lot of these disc foams as I was thinking about scrapping the brush holder idea and making a spiral staircase go up the entire tower on the inside. With a pencil I draw a rough outline of the door. I know I said earlier that generally I try to use easily accessible tools or at least be able to mention an alternative to achieve something, but good luck in cutting the doorway out of a 2 inch PVC pipe. Luckily I had an oscillating dremel that I was able to cut the sides with before breaking the doorway out with a pair of heavy needle nose pliers and then filing it smooth. It was at this point I realized I should have just went and bought a can of sour cream Pringles. I would have just needed a utility knife and then I would have also had a snack. Since I picked the hard way of doing this, I use 100 grit sandpaper to sand the gloss off of the PVC pipe at the end. This glossy finish will cause adhesion issues with paint and glue in later stages. Back at my desk, I paint the PVC pipe with black primer, but you can also use cheap craft paint. While the tower dries, I move to the XPS foam, and with an X-Acto knife, I stack two strips and cut one inch long bricks, and then round the edges on the table. I do this arduous task for every single brick. With the bricks rounded, I use a texture roller and very, very forcibly roll it over the foam. You really want to get a single hard pass in order to get a clean texture. Even still, I will go back with a ballpoint pen and deepen the grooves. You do not need the texture roller for this step and can simply draw in your own pattern with the pen. With the tower dry, I take scraps of half inch XPS foam and plan out what this is going to look like. The idea I had in mind is a tower on a hill, so I'll need two tiers of foam. I draw out where the path will be and then I trace around the PVC pipe so I know where I need to avoid cutting. I then take the utility knife and go to town. This took a while and is incredibly messy. I recommend doing this slowly over a trash can to minimize cleanup. And be sure to cycle your blades regularly and if you cut XPS foam with a dull blade you'll get a jagged tearing result instead of a clean cut. I add texture to the XPS foam that will be the earth using a ball of aluminum foil. You need only to really roll the steepest slopes of the earth as most of the flatter surfaces will be completely covered. With PVA glue and a little super glue, I adhere the two pieces together. The super glue is for a quick bond to keep the foam in place for the PVA glue to cure. Be aware that super glue melts XPS foam, so use it sparingly. With the same adhesives, I begin gluing the bricks onto the PVC pipe. 
I quickly learned that it helped to pre-bend the bricks around my finger before trying to glue them on. This made them conform to the curvature of the PVC pipe and help prevent poor adhesion. After the glue has had plenty of time to dry, I roll a ball of aluminum foil over the bricks to give them texture. I was nervous here, afraid the bricks would dislodge or pop off. To my surprise, they remain securely fastened to the pipe. With an X-Acto knife, I follow the top of the PVC pipe, cutting the excess foam brick until it's flush with the top of the pipe. I cut a rudimentary door frame from a wooden cooking skewer using a utility knife and then glue them in place. And then, with an awl, I carve a general rune above the doorway. I use a spare 3 inch miniature base as the top floor of the tower. I remove the paper from a scrap piece of quarter inch poster board and then glue the base to it. While the glue dries, I cut bricks out of more scrap half inch XPS foam. These are roughly a quarter inch by half an inch. With an X-Acto knife, I go back and cut the excess foam from around the base and then roll the top of it with the texture roller, deepening the grooves with the ballpoint pen. Again with the X-Acto knife, I cut a square egress away from the base, and from the remaining poster board scrap, I cut a square to drop in and act as a door. I wanted this to be separate instead of just drawn or carved in, as I feel like the separation may add a little more depth. With the ballpoint pen, I add texture to the wood, before rolling a ball of aluminum foil over the floor. With a small disc that was rolled and textured a long time ago, I place it where I want, trace an outline, and then glue it into place. While the glue dries, I take the small bricks I recently cut, place them in a container of rock, seal it, and then summon my inner outcast as I shake it like a Polaroid picture. This textures the rock so I don't need to try to roll foil over individual bricks. Again, pre-shaping the bricks around my finger to match the curvature of the base, I begin adhering them around the base. A second layer is then added, overlapping but leaving gaps to form a rudimentary parapet. With Mod Podge formula I stole from Black Magic Crafts, see a link to the video in this video's description, I cover all of the foam that has been worked for this project. This will serve as a general black base coat as well as help harden the foam slightly for protection. With AK Interactive Sandy Desert Texture Paste, I apply it everywhere to the earth piece, save for the tower floor and steepest edges. You can completely skip this step as this is all covered over completely by the snow texture later. If you're going to use a slightly lighter application of snow than I did, then this step may still be warranted. I then glue the tower in place and then add more sandy desert around the base and the very bottom of the tower to cover the seam and give the impression that the tower could continue underground. With PVA glue, I adhere a litter of assorted stones around the earth. I then glue the hatch in place on the upstairs floor and then cut a section from a toothpick and then two thin strips from cardstock to build a basic door hinge. With the majority of the parts of the build and assembly finally completed, I take it back outside and then coat everything with Vallejo Matte Black Primer thinned with airbrush thinner. I then mix black and white to make gray and then thin it with airbrush thinner and then add some highlights. 
I then add a lesser highlight of white primer thinned with airbrush thinner. Finally, I add a very mild highlight using Golden High Flow Acrylics Titanium White. With everything now primed and painted, it's starting to actually look like something. Here I tried applying dark tone wash and this ended up not only being a mess and completely undoing a lot of the airbrush work, but you can skip this step as 90% of this is going to be covered by the snow texture later. With matte white paint I dry brush everything, trying to undo some of the lost highlights when I place the wash down. Again this is mostly a wasted step as it's going to be covered by the snow. I apply a plasmatic bolt that has been thinned with glaze medium to the steepest areas around the earth. The look I wanted was something like what can be seen at Baikal Lake in Russia. I then applied dark wood speed paint to the door frame and the trap door on the upper floor. I then paint the door hinge with rough iron and then a highlight from a mix of rough iron with weapon bronze, and then finally an edge highlight with weapon bronze. With matte white, I lightly dry brush over the plasmatic bolt to bring some highlights in. When all the paint is dry, I begin applying snow texture. This was a sticky mess and was the equivalent of painting with marshmallow fluff. I must say this texture paste is garbage and not worth your time. It is difficult to use and does not leave a good finish. Of course this is not the case and was entirely caused by my stupidity and inexperience. My first application of this was not pleasant. While waiting for the texture paste to dry, I paint the stonework of the tower with runic gray speed paint that has been thinned with glaze medium. I wasn't sure about this color, originally considering Gravelore gray, but I feel the runic gray makes the tower seem colder. The next day, I come back for round two with the texture paste. The primary issue I had the first time was that it would stick to my finger and brush when applying, and I was just as liable to pull it away as I was to place it on. My idea this time was to put some snow texture down, dip my finger in water, and then try to smooth it around the terrain. This worked marvelously. This had become so easy, I decided to even add some above the door frame, which was very easy to apply in shape. Then I decided to get crazy. I had the wild idea that if I put some snow texture in a small container and then thin it with water, what would it look like? Uh, the result was fan friggin tastic. Look at the tower top. I wish I had the entire set looking like this. You would think someone would be smart enough to put instructions on the bottle that say it can be thinned with water or some kind of acrylic thinner. Uh, damn it. It does. This is the final result. I know this video was long and had a ton of steps and it felt every bit as chaotic when I was actually making this, but ultimately it's very simple. Build the tower, build the ground, build the top of the tower, paint everything, and then add snow. I'm looking forward to my next snowy terrain now that I have a better grasp on how to use these pastes. For lessons learned, the number one point is I need to stop being a man and actually read the instructions. If I would have known to thin the snow terrain pace, I would have saved time and the texture pace itself. I've been using this product line in the hardest way possible, save for trying to apply it directly with my face. The water made using this product infinitely easier. The other lesson learned is I need to plan ahead a little better. Had I really thought about it, I would have skipped the sandy desert terrain pace, the dark tone wash step, and I wouldn't have bothered rolling the entire earth area using aluminum foil. After all, I covered all of this area using the snow terrain anyway. 
That's going to wrap it up for today. I hope you learned something or inspired to build your own custom terrain. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you like the content of this video and would like to see more, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm Jim with Working With Miniatures. I'm truly grateful for your time, and I bid you a fond farewell. Till the next video.